days of a bitter December in 1861, a story unfolded within the hallowed halls of the royal palace that would echo through the annals of history. Prince Albert, a figure beloved and revered, lay gravely ill. His condition worsened day by day, yet Queen Victoria, his devoted wife, clung to a thread of hope against the encroaching shadows of despair. She whispered fervently to a weary physician, My husband shall not depart this world, for his passing would surely be the end of me as well. Despite her prayers, the cruel hand of fate moved unyielding. In the cold embrace of that December, Prince Albert succumbed to his ailment, a tragedy that cast not only the royal family, but also the entire nation into an abyss of grief. The premature demise of the Prince Consort at the tender age of 42 had a profound impact, rippling through the fabric of society. So join me now as we look back at Christmas 1861 and how it was for the widow of Windsor. This sad event unwittingly set the trend, with the fashion for jet jewellery from the quaint town of Whitby gaining unprecedented popularity. The demand for black crepe soared as the nation collectively mourned its loss, embracing the sombre hues of sorrow. In those final agonising weeks, Prince Albert's suffering was immense, yet he held on to life with a heartbreaking and awe-inspiring tenacity. He was not alone in his struggle, his third child Alice stood steadfastly by his side. She assumed the role of nursemaid, a beacon of care and comfort in her father's time of need, her presence a testament to the unbreakable bonds of family and love. On the sad evening of December 14th in the year of our Lord 1861, a profound silence enveloped the royal chambers. Once a pillar of strength and guidance, Prince Albert breathed his last. Encircled by the loving embrace of five of his nine children and his ever faithful wife, Queen Victoria. His departure from this mortal coil marked the end of an era, a moment etched in the annals of history with a poignant blend of reverence and sorrow. Following his death, Prince Albert's body was temporarily interred in the hallowed and dignified setting of the Royal Vault within St. George's Chapel. On December the 18th of the following year, a solemn procession bore him to his final resting place in the Royal Mausoleum of Frogmore, a site that would forever hold the echoes of a nation's grief. The shroud of mystery surrounding his untimely demise only added to the tragic narrative, believed to have succumbed to a vicious bout of typhoid fever. The actual cause remained shrouded in uncertainty, as Queen Victoria, in her profound grief, forbade any post-mortem examination. This decision has since ignited endless speculation among modern scholars, theories ranging from Crohn's disease to cancer. Yet, irrespective of its genesis, Albert's death cast a long shadow over the country. News of his passing saw shops shutter their doors and theatres darken their stages in a gesture of profound respect and mourning. The Christmas that followed barely a week after his departure was marked by an overwhelming air of somberness across Britain. The once joyous holiday was now a reflection of a nation in mourning. Victoria's grief transcended personal loss, morphing into a defining trait of her reign. From that day forward, she donned only garments of mourning black, earning her the moniker, the Widow of Windsor. Her sorrow plunged her into an abyss of depression, leading her to shun public appearances and duties, igniting whispers of dissent regarding her worthiness of the Crown's annual stipend. Nevertheless, the Queen remained steadfast in her administrative responsibilities. She continued her official correspondence and granted audiences to ministers and dignitaries. Yet she remained a figure withdrawn from the public eye, a monarch enshrouded in the veil of perpetual mourning. Her reign endured nearly 64 years and became synonymous with longevity and a relentless unyielding grief that defined an era. As the 1860s drew to a close, the British public, restless and disenchanted, began to murmur about Queen Victoria's prolonged withdrawal from public life. 
There were whispers, some peaceful, others bold, calling for her to abdicate the throne in favour of her eldest son, Bertie, who was destined to become King Edward VII, and this period marked a tumultuous chapter in the history of the British monarchy, as the Queen's seclusion cast a shadow over the royal family's connection with its subjects. However, the winds of change were stirring. In a twist of fate on the 10th anniversary of Prince Albert's death, Bertie fell gravely ill, an event that unexpectedly swayed public sentiment back in favour of the grieving Queen. Bertie's illness, severe and alarming, gripped the nation's heart, and his miraculous recovery a few weeks later was nothing short of a revelation. This pivotal moment prompted calls for a public thanksgiving service, marking Queen Victoria's return to the public eye in a grand state ceremonial appearance, her first in a decade. Since his union with Queen Victoria in 1840, Prince Albert had served as the foundational pillar for his family and the British monarchy. His role extended beyond the personal as he became an influential and imaginative advisor to the government. His diplomatic skill shone brightly during the American Civil War, where he was instrumental in upholding British neutrality, a critical and sensitive position amidst global tension. Before Victoria's ascension to the throne, the royal family under the Hanoverian line had struggled with popularity among the British populace. However, the union of Victoria and Albert marked a turning point. Together they transformed the public perception of the monarchy, presenting themselves and their children as approachable and relatable figures to the ordinary people, a stark contrast to the aloofness that had previously characterised royal demeanour. Their story began with a meeting in 1836 when Victoria was a young princess of 17 years. Albert, born Prince Franz August Karl Albert Emmanuel, had spent his early years at Schloss Rossenhau and the Ducal Palaces in Coburg and Gotha. His uncle, Prince Leopold, who later became the King of the Belgians, had long hoped to unite Albert with his cousin, Princess Victoria, the heir presumptive to the British throne. Following their initial meeting, Victoria wrote to Leopold, expressing gratitude for the introduction to Albert, whom she described as Dear Albert, a testament to the immediate connection that they shared. Their engagement, announced on November 23, 1839, culminated in a royal wedding on February 10, 1840, at the Chapel Royal, St. James's Palace. This union not only marked the beginning of a profound partnership, but also heralded a new era for the British monarchy, reshaping its image and legacy for future generations. In 1840, Prince Albert achieved a significant milestone, marking his ascent into the echelons of British royalty and governance. He was bestowed with the esteemed honour of becoming a Knight of the Garter and was inducted as a Privy Councillor. This role granted him considerable influence and access within the inner circles of the monarchy. His stature further solidified in 1857 when he was officially given the title of Prince Consort, a recognition that underscored his integral role alongside Queen Victoria. Prince Albert's involvement in the affairs of the state was profound and far-reaching. He received unrestricted access to cabinet and state documents, a privilege that signified the deep trust and dependence the Queen and the government had in him. From 1841, he was a regular presence at the audiences Queen Victoria held with her ministers, actively participating in the discussions and decisions that shaped the nation. Despite his extensive responsibilities, Prince Albert cherished his role as a family man. The company of his nine children brought him immense joy and satisfaction, serving as a sanctuary of love and warmth amidst his demanding public duties. Family life was a cornerstone of his existence, a source of unwavering delight and fulfilment. The enduring love and deep bond between Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were poignantly symbolised at her death in January 1901. Victoria, aged 81, passed away leaving a legacy as one of Britain's most iconic monarchs, a touching tribute to their eternal connection manifested in her final resting place. Alongside her, in her coffin lay one of Albert's dressing gowns and a plaster cast of his hand, silent yet powerful symbols of their undying love and companionship. She was also buried adorned in her wedding veil, 
a poignant reminder of the day that their remarkable journey together as husband and wife began, a journey that continued to resonate through the annals of history long after their passing. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you love what you saw and are eager for more, you've got just the thing waiting for you. Don't miss out on this next video featuring the life of Queen Victoria, a full-length story of one of the most iconic British queens. Mm -hmm.